So what is a loop? Well, let's start with the idea of a loop in real life. A loop is something that starts at the bottom maybe and loops up and round back to where it started. And that's a good starting point for understanding loop in the coding context because a loop will take a set of instructions, will begin at the start of the instructions, work all the way through them and then go back to the top and work through them again, just like a loop does in real life. And we can program Excel, we can ask Excel to work through that loop any number of times. So potentially the time it could save is absolutely huge. In fact, I would say if you master loops, it won't just make you more efficient in Excel, it will actually transform the way you're working in Excel and transform the way you're thinking about your work generally. So let's take a look at the spreadsheet. Uh, in the first video, we put a button in to complete a simple everyday task using a macro to duplicate a sheet. Now, if I go to the developer tab and to the visual basic editor, uh, we can see the code that I created there. I've just tidied it up a bit, but this code is just selecting the first sheet and then copying it after, uh, after the first sheet. So copying it as the second sheet in the workbook. So let's test that quickly. I'm just clicking in the code, you can see the cursor there and hitting the play button. And we can see that we now have two sheets in the workbook. So that's great, that's working well. But what if we wanted to create, you know, 50 sheets, 100 sheets, we wouldn't want to be clicking that button every time, even that would become onerous. We can use loops to speed this up dramatically and to complete that kind of task at the click of a button. To do so, we're going to uh, get to know a new code idea and I'm going to show you here I'm going to create a new macro by typing in sub test and you can see Excel has given me n sub so that's a new macro we have now and I'm going to introduce the idea of first active workbook so you can probably guess that that means the workbook we're currently working with active workbook is the uh, the construct that Visual Basic recognizes Active workbook dot sheets, so that's the sheets in the workbook dot count. So if we just take a look at that, I mentioned in the last video, you know, Visual Basic is fairly easy to understand, and just looking at that, you know, what do you think it might mean? Well, this uh, particular construct is going to tell us how many sheets are in the active workbook. So if we're thinking about a loop to create a certain number of sh sheets, this construct is going to be very helpful to us. And to allow us to see it, I'm going to just um, add message box at the beginning. You'll see in our beginner coding videos how to use message boxes. So this should um, flash up a message box telling us how many worksheets are in the current workbook. OK, so I'm going to click the cursor in there, going to give it a try. So I just click the play button. As we can see, a message box has come up with two in. That's because there's two sheets in the active workbook. So that seems to be working well. Let's test it. I'm going to add another sheet with the duplicate sheet button and then go back to the code we just created, the active workbook.sheets.count uh, line, then hitting play. And as we can see, it's now returning a value of three that's because there's one, two, three sheets in the workbook. So this active workbook.sheets.count is a good example of a piece of information that Excel knows, but is not immediately visible to us as a user. And that's an important um, coding skill to learn, uh, to be able to bring out those little pieces of information that Excel knows and to exploit them, to use them to control your loops, to use them in your coding more generally. So let's have a look at putting the loop in the code. We're going to go back to the original macro that we created in, in the last video, which is duplicate sheets. And you might remember from the beginner videos what the first steps are in creating a loop. Well, we're going to need a variable to help us control the loop. A variable is just a place to store a piece of information that's going to help you in your coding somehow. This variable is going to help us to control the loop. So it's going to tell Excel how many times to go through the loop. And it's also going to tell Excel where the loop starts, where the loop finishes. That doesn't make sense yet. Don't worry about it. Let's see how we create and use the variable. So this part is called variable declaration. And I've used the terms uh, dim counter as integer. Now counter is the variable. I've created the counter 
variable. I've used the term counter because it's going to help us to count through the loop. It's always a good idea to give your variables informative names so that you can understand what they're doing. So I'm say, saying to Excel, I've created a variable to store some information and it's an integer. So it's going to be a whole number. And this declaration process and telling Excel what kind of data it is allows Excel to organize its memory and to run the code efficiently. So that's an important thing to do. So we have our variable to control the loop. Next thing we need to do is to create a loop. And I think the most appropriate and probably easiest uh, construct to use will be the for next loop, the for next construct. How do we do that? Well, we begin with for and then put the name of the variable we're using to count in. So for counter equals one, two, five. So in the first instance, I'm going to try to create five sheets at the click of a button. So I want Excel to loop through the code, to loop through the code five times. That's why we've added uh, for counter equals one to five. So if we have a four, we have to have a next, okay? A four without a next, it's gonna create uh, an error and the next closes the loop. So if you have a four, you have to have a next. Next counter should do the job nicely. So uh, you can see I've referenced the variable we've already created. So you can see how the counter variable bookends um, this piece of code here. So we can see it at the beginning of the code we can see it at the end of the code. So that variable is controlling the loop, controlling how many times we go through the loop. You might remember that what's gonna happen is every time Excel goes through the loop, it increases the value of counter by one until counter gets to five. And once counter gets to five, Excel will stop going through the loop, will exit the loop and will stop doing the code. Okay, don't worry about the technical stuff if you don't understand that. Just try to develop the practical understanding. Let's do that now. So as always, it's a good idea just to try to run the code, see what happens. Don't worry too much if there's an error. You can always fix it and tweak it later. That's all part of programming. So the cursor is in there. I'm going to just hit the play button, see what happens. I could see there Excel was working through something just um, by the changes in the cursor. It was like Excel was pulsing through something. Yeah, that's because it was going up and down the code, working through the loop. Let's go back to the worksheet, see what's happened. So we can now see we've got eight sheets down here and I can confirm that. I can confirm that by going back uh, to the routine I created here. And let's find out how many sheets are in the workbook. So there's eight sheets in the workbook at the moment. That makes sense because we had three uh, to begin with and Excel has created five more for us. So that seems to be working well, um, but what else could we do with that? Well, let's try changing, um, let's say rather than five sheets, let's create 100 sheets. Let's see if we can do that, lots of sheets. So I'm gonna change this number uh, to 100 and then just gonna set the code off and work through it again. Now you'll remember uh, we had eight sheets before, so we would expect to have 108 sheets now. And if we look at the Visual Basic Editor, we can see that Excel is working through the task, uh, creating all those sheets. So all of those mouse clicks we had to duplicate, move and copy, do things like that. Excel is currently doing that um, for us. OK, so the code has finished. Uh, I've got control of the cursor back, so the code has finished. And we can see there's lots of sheets here, um, 108 sheets. Uh, well, from the sheet titles, it looks like there's 108 sheets, but I want to confirm how many sheets there are. So I'm going to run the macro to tell us how many sheets there are in the workbook. Okay, 108 sheets. So we had it eight before. We just run that code 100 times, run the loop 100 times. Excel has been through the loop 100 times. That gives us uh, 108 sheets. Okay, so that's as far as we're going to go in this video, but hopefully you're beginning to get a feel for just how powerful loops are. So there we've taken a task that if you weren't using Visual Basic, weren't using loops, would take you maybe 15 minutes, half an hour, but more importantly, it would make you really stressed because you feel like you're doing something that's very repetitive. So this is a great example of harnessing the power of code, harnessing the power of loops to speed up an everyday task in Excel. Now, before we move on uh, to the next video, I want you to, I'm gonna set a challenge for you. 
and I want you to try to record some code for deleting sheets. So we've been adding sheets. Try to record some code for deleting sheets. So go back to uh, the developer tab, hit record macro, delete some sheets, and then just examine that code. And just like we've done so far to add sheets, see if you can tweak that code and get it working for you to delete sheets. Okay, that's what we're going to have a look at in the next video. See you then.